when I'm on the world tour with this machine, the new Marble machine, I don't want to play only one song. I want to play several songs on the machine, but how should we switch between the songs? I've made a brand new solution and I want to show you exactly how this would work. Here is the wheel and it turns around like this when it's playing music, but it has a secret. If I unhook a lever right here, like that, we can remove the song like this. So the song is now off and to unhook the last part of the song I need to pull the other lever and then we get the song off completely. Previously I had the idea to remove the whole wheel so the song is finished, we remove the wheel and we put in another wheel that has been programmed behind stage. We play song number two and we switch them back and forth. With this new idea, we don't have to do that. This structure can stay on the machine at all times. So we don't have to disengage gears and stuff, which is much simpler. You remove this song and you get song number two. I open the lever and I snap it on. It's already in place like this. And then I just turn the wheel. And for the final one, I open the hook and we have the new song on. Yay! <laughs> Look how happy model Martin is. Here's the lever close up. You can see up here how it unhooks. We can remove the song. Hooks the song. So here you can see we have three hooks moving and closing the song. So open, close. Here are the programming profiles. So if the pen is a reader, it will be on top. It will fall down. It will go up, fall down, following the profiles like this. These are the channels, so channel one, two, three, four, five, and they have all the same programming profiles here, and that's just for the 3D printed test. This system will be foolproof. When you put a song on, no programming profile is ending up at the wrong spot. There's no manual error when putting the song on. If you had to put on like 4,000 individual profiles manually during stress on the concert, that uh, could be a lot of human failures. I like to feel things with my hands. I printed this wheel on the printer just to get a feel for the mechanism, but we're not going to 3D print this wheel for the final machine. So if we're not printing this wheel, how would we make it? Well, the structure of the programming wheel we would make on a rotary CNC machine. So I think all things rotating should be machined in a rotating fashion. That's much better. So that's for the structure. And then for the song themselves, so the profiles, I think that can be laser, water or CNC cut from thin sheets of plastic we would have a lot of these profiles and string them together into this weave with the perfect space between them and they would snap fit right on the programming wheel structure. This week we have 22 new Bindegatan backers. Thank you so much, thanks to your support. I can keep declining sponsorship offers so I don't have to sell you unnecessary products and I can keep on following my dream. Thank you so much. But even if we get this to work perfectly, there will still be a slight pause between the songs when switching. So what do we do in the pause? Well, I'm going to play with the band. Here's the band members. Here's Marcus, the super glue. I'll put Marcus there. Evelina, crafting person, paper glue, and David is the wooden glue. The band is gonna glue the concerts together, okay? So there will be no pauses in the music. So when we are switching the mechanical songs on the Marm machine, the band can play, and me together with the band can play a song normally. So we can have continuous music during the whole concert. And then I, of course, also want the band to join in in the music together with the machine. So this way the machine can play like the foundation of a song and the band members can add like extra beautiful stuff on top. That's going to be brilliant, I think. On the previous solutions, I could insert music notes manually. So I could take the programming wheel and just snap it in place click it in like that and we have a note. And this is pretty important because then I can compose music on the machine. I can make a bass line, listen to how it sounds and alter it. Okay, let's move that note a little bit earlier and listen to how that sounds. And the way you program it is that you put these little nails in, standard Lego Technique nails. When they travel on the programming wheel like this, they will engage with the lifting fingers like this that will release the marble. So when you put them in there, the vibraphone will play its lowest note. 
So this programming will result in the vibraphone playing from its lowest note up to its highest. Can I do that on this new solution? Well, yes. When I'm composing music, how would I program this manually? I can't use these pre-made songs because that's not an iterative process. So we would make these small programming profiles. We leave space where I can snap fit the manual profiles as well. So then I can have the wheel filled with manual profiles that I can put anywhere like this. And when I'm done with a song, I remove them and we manufacture on the CNC machine the full song with the concert ready profiles. But do we even need this? Why can't we just do manual programming also for the tour? Well, I think the music will require thousands of programming pins and that's just too many to put in manually in a reliable way. With this design, I think we can have several hundreds of channels, which will give this machine a lot of musical expressivity, which I want to be inspired to make fantastic songs for this machine and to play them night after night on the tour. So I'm really happy about the musical opportunities that this brings to the project, but I'm also aware to stay away from feature creep. I'm not going to build in 600 channels if I can make a machine that I'm happy with, with 300 channels. Delete, delete, delete. But let's see how this looks in the model. I built this in scale 1 to 10 as well. Let's take one of the paper wheels off and let's put this in there. It's always so fun to put a camera angle as if the model was playing a concert. It feels cool seeing this programming wheel move. Ah, oh, this is going to be a beautiful sculpture, I feel. And remember, these wheels are spinning as well. So the machine is playing. Do do do. Song is over. And then the song technicians comes in in their white lab coats and start this process. And gets the song off the wheel. Takes the new piece of music, puts it on. Oops, the vibraphone fell over. Not good. Sorry, Wembley Stadium. And the last part, boom. I've gone from playing with marbles to playing with dolls. <laughs> I think this is a very good progression for the project. <laughs> Where's the band? Oh, there they are. Evelina plays solo on the modulin right now. So this feels much better than the idea to switch out the entire wheel. Imagine we can leave all the gears and everything in contact. We just take off the skin of the programming wheel and that's our music. This is the first time that I actually have an idea that probably would work during a Marble Machine World Tour concert. Is this idea simpler than using a MIDI keyboard? No. Is it simpler than using solenoids? No, but it's way more cool and way more fun. So I really want a mechanical marble machine without electricity. That's the big idea, I feel. So yeah, I feel this is really a fun progression. And another fun progression is that we have 399 total Vintuatan backers at this stage. The financial support is so helpful. I can have Hannes more time and I get more time. You're giving me time to work on this. But the act of actually supporting that uh, even means even more for me personally because you're telling me to keep on fighting this fight and I love to hear that from you. I'm gonna keep progressing this stupid idea until it's not stupid anymore. Mm -hmm.